Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to make a video about one of the hot new kids on the block uh, in the analytics space, which is Pachi Druid. Um, and so Druid, as you can read up on here, is basically a database that is designed for really, really fast queries um, in terms of for batch data that can power real-time analytics. Um, so you know, there's actually a good saying, I think that uh, real-time analytics is just really fast batching, right? Um, and so that's really kind of what Druid is. It's able to batch and process your data so fast with those sub-second queries that it almost feels like it is real-time analytics. You know, a data point is produced and automatically it appears in your database. Uh, so today what I'm gonna do is kind of just first walk you through what Apache Druid is at a high level, go a little look into its technology, and then we'll try and download it on my local computer um, and just walk through the setup process and play around with it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, and if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton and I won't beg anymore for the rest of the video. Um, so first things first, uh, there actually is some handy uh, technology page on this Druid website where you can kind of see uh, how just a typical Druid and it's a little bit of a doozy. Um, so similarly to Airflow, uh, Druid is basically a service-based architecture, or it's not service-based, but it's, or not similar to Airflow in that it's service-based, but similar to Airflow in that it's split up into a lot of different separate components. Um, and the difference here is that it is a service-based architecture. So each of these services can scale independently, um, and you can say, hey, you know, maybe you want to do a lot of queries at once. Well, then you'll pump your query node with a lot more resources um, and more resources directed at the actual query service, uh, and that will allow you to run faster queries. Um, and then you can see you have deep store, you have data nodes, which kind of index, batch your data, and then put it in a deep storage. So the advantage of Druid here is that because it's, you know, has kind of this index of batches of data, it's able to more quickly access that data when you put that query in because, hey, instead of having to go through every single uh, P, you know, index in that database, every single you know, iteratively, like a traditional database query would. Instead, it'll know, oh, okay, so because it's of this type, I know it's in this uh, batch in deep storage, pull it out and then serve it um, to the query node. Um, and there's no real like specific hardware requirements. Um, you know, you could run all these nodes on a single server, um, just on a laptop. Um, but then, you know, as you scale, you can add additional nodes, assign each node their own individual compute service, scale them independently. Um, you can see, you know, it can, scale pretty well because you can just keep throwing more compute at it right and so on the rest of this page if you're interested it goes into exactly you know how kind of this uh you know tagging a uh ingestion system works they call it a roll up where it's you know pre-aggregated so it's faster to reference you can see kind of the index numbers here um, how the interactive queries are actually taken out but at the end of the day we don't care how it happens we just care that it happens faster so now i'll take a look at you know actually hey what does this look like to download um, so what we'll do here is just download the source from the uh, apache download mirrors website and so here um, just tit, there start the download process and then i'll kick it over my local ui and show you how we can get started with it so after you have uh you know downloaded the Apache Druid. So you can either unpack it via terminals and apologies for the really small type here. Uh, I promise we'll get out of it soon. So here we have, uh, you know, my Apache Druid file system and to actually interact with it, we need to uh, start it up in terminal. So what I'll do is open up a new VS code window um, and we'll look at it from there. So here just have our root directory over here on the left. And then you're going to run these commands because actually it's not the right way to do it. Uh, you looks like you need to do it via terminal. So what I just did here was uh, download the bin tar.gz file, then run this tar uh, xzf command, and then cd into my new Apache Druid 2.7. So let me quick switch uh, what folder is actually open here by going to this and boom. Now we're in the right folder and we should be able to execute the next command, which is going to be uh, dot bin slash start druid. And looks like you do need to pass a memory value. So that wasn't actually in the initial quick starts for this 16G, um, and this will use a specific amount of memory. So here you can start uh, Apache Druid. You'll have uh, accessible at our local host 8888. Um, to access the web console. And now here we are in the web console. Um, so 
took me a couple seconds, but really like maybe 30 seconds to actually start this up. Seems pretty lightweight. You will have to have that terminal command running, um, similar to, you know, if you're running like a node server uh, to actually keep this uh, program running. Um, and so what we can then do is, why don't we try querying some data? Um, so here, what we can do is actually, let's load data. Um, so our query, select from, hmm, yes, connect external data, there we go. So what we'll do is you see you can use you know S3, ADF, or Azure Data Lake, HDFS, um, paste data. You also have this example data set. Um, so here, one day of Wikipedia data sets, New York City cab information. I've seen this New York City cab information like in a bunch of different things. I guess it's a really traditional like routing issue. So that's probably why I need it, but just thought that was interesting. Um, and so here you can load files from a single directory. You can filter for files um, and Instead of using, actually, yeah, I'll just show you how to point it to a local file. So here, it actually comes prepackaged with some data. Um, so if we go file filter, and then we go wiki ticker, um, actually double check this is in here. So just sample.jz file, and it seems like there's a lot of different uh, data sets actually within that uh, data file. Or, kind of example folder. So go to your base directory, quick start tutorial, um, and you can see some of those there. And then here, nice, easy, uh, GUI process for just uploading this data. Um, and then here on the parse page, we can examine the raw data, and just kind of look at, you know, its attributes. So here, um, you know, this is just looking at external Wikipedia publishing data. Uh, I don't know why they would choose this <laughs> set. It doesn't seem that interesting, but maybe it is super cool. And then if I want to, you know, change how the data is handled. So here, you know, it's in a JSON format. I can change, you know, how I want to read it in. So maybe if I wanted to say it's a CSV, I could do that. Again, you know, just trying to think of options. And if you want to kind of like perform any option, like to transform your data on your JSON as you're loading it, you have this JSON parser um, where you can say, hey, you know, allow single quotes, allow uncoded field names um, to, you know, just basically filter the data as it comes in. Um, and then here we can hit do is hit done. And this will generate us a query just based on, you know, so selecting our time. So time parse is going to select the time column as our primary indicator uh, for time series data, partition it by day. And then if we want to actually preview the data, we can open this up and give it a second. So I guess sub second queries aren't true when you're running it on a MacBook. Um, but you know, that's part of the part of the problem. Um, so here, just loading this data, pause it. And so here, after it's not, it wasn't actually 19 seconds. It took like two minutes to actually come up, but I think it's cause it actually just started the server. Um, so here you can see just kind of a preview of the data that we have here, the different comments, um, of what was added, change, you know, whatever. And so here we can also just run this query if we want. So here this will, uh, you know, again, Take a little bit, so I'll pause it again. We'll see how long it takes. And boom. So this actually was a lot quicker. So it took around you know 30 seconds, I think, to actually execute. Um, and that's almost 40,000 rows uh, inserted in 25 seconds, which is using a MacBook. So it's pretty it's pretty fast. Um, I will I will say that it's it's pretty good. Um, and now like once this is done, if I want to query the data, so I've done my ingestion go over the query tab, and then I can select, you know, just the certain channels. And you can see here um, the different amount of visitors for each uh, country of LinkedIn. So what is this? VI must be Vietnam LinkedIn. Huh. Looks like Vietnam LinkedIn is very popular. Yeah, that is what it is. Wow. Um, super interesting, honestly. And this is why we like playing with data and interacting with it. You just get to find some really cool insights that you wouldn't uh, otherwise. So that uh, is really kind of all I wanted to run through with you. You can also monitor many different data sources. So you're not restricted, you know, to just having to go through that whole process every time you want to pull one in. Um, if you look at the back end services, this is all just running on, you know, one server, but you know, with different hosts exposed and you can see kind of, you know, my max size, everything on here. Um, you can also monitor different tasks and let's see. Tasks are basically what just what uh, Druid calls queries um, or any kind of operation. So query select, uh, sampling, and you can you know filter by data source status. Uh, supervisors 
this is where you know if you want to integrate something like Kafka, uh, you could or sorry, uh, Kafka, yeah, Kafka, any kind of monitoring tool um, to monitor your uh, Druid jobs. You would have kind of integration pane here, where if I want to, you know, uh, submit additional supervisor, put their information in, whatever, uh, to actually monitor the streams of Druid. And uh, yeah, that's everything. Uh, so hopefully, I gave you a good kind of crash course in how to use Apache Druid. If you think this seems super useful for your use case, go try it out. Um, it's totally free, love open source products because you can watch this video and then go start building right after it. Um, so hope you found this helpful. Without further ado, hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out, peace.